sides. And when they did, they described who God had ordained you to be. In that one little simple cell, scientists say if you took the DNA out of that one little cell and stretched it out, that DNA would be six feet long, three billion characters stretched out to six feet long. So amazing that if I were to read your DNA, reading one character per second, night and day, it would take me 96 years just to read the description of you. And when they formed together, they wrote out and painted a picture which had never been written before in the history of humankind. And then that cell did the unthinkable. It set out to build that model from one cell. I'm telling you, you are a miracle sitting in this building tonight. And you have come a long, long way. I mean, here you are. This may not be in the family photo album, but here you are (laughs) at three days old. 16 cells of you. You say, what in the world is that? It's a 16 cell human embryo on the tip of a safety pin at incredible magnification. So by now that one cell had turned into 16 cells on its way to making the 75 trillion cells that make up your body tonight. Every one of those 75 trillion cells containing that six feet of the three billion character DNA code that you. There's so much DNA in your body, by the way. If you stretched it all end to end, there'd be enough DNA to go to the moon and back inside your body. 178,000 times. That's how amazing God has made you to be. 75 trillion cells in your body. And when I told you that, 50,000 of those cells died and were replaced by brand new cells when I told you that. And then just now, 50,000 more cells died and were replaced by brand new cells. It's happening every three seconds, day and night, all the days of your existence. And you wonder why you're tired all the time. I'll tell you, you're doing some amazing stuff night and day. We're miracles, you and me. I love the way Augustine said it, one of the great fathers of the church and of the faith. He just nailed it when he said it like this. Men go abroad to wonder at the height of mountains, the huge waves of the sea, the long course of rivers, the vast compass of the ocean, the circular motion of the stars, but they pass by themselves and they don't even notice. In the womb, miracles happening every moment. Here you are at five months in the womb. You remember those days, those were the good old days. (laughs) And just miracles happening every second. Let me tell you about one. Million optic nerve endings left the optic nerve center of your brain in the womb, headed for a million optic nerves that had left your eye. And they had to meet and match their exact partner, one million looking for one million. And when they found their exact partner out of a million and matched up together, in that instant you had sight. And anyone would tell you that to this moment, the most technologically advanced thing on planet Earth is your eye. Oh, but it didn't do you any good because when that moment happened, you just had one piece of skin completely covering your eyeball. But as I read in one textbook, miraculously and mysteriously at about the sixth month, a little cutting device appeared and it cut perfectly that piece of skin. And you had eyelids for the very first time in your mother's womb. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. And the God of the heavens is the one who fashioned you together. And he knows your name tonight. And he knows every single 
thing there is to know about you. And he's made you a promise that for those who trust in him, he will literally hold them in his hand and carry them all the days of their life. This Psalm 33 that talks about a star breathing God turns an interesting corner. It says, for he spoke and it came to be. He commanded and it stood fast. That's power and awe. But now it gets very personal. From heaven, the Lord looks down and sees all mankind. From his dwelling place, he watches all who live on earth. He who forms the hearts of them all and is intimately acquainted with everything they do. And then he goes even further. And he says, the eyes of the Lord are on those who fear him on those who hope in his unfailing love, and here comes his promise, to deliver them from death and to keep them alive in famine. And that is the promise tonight because this building and our world is filled with hurting people, with lives that are spinning out of control, with pain that we, don't, we didn't ask for or could never imagine. And God is making a promise to us tonight. He's saying, I am a universe maker and I am a heart former, but I'm also big enough to be intimately acquainted with all the circumstances of every one of your lives. And I promise you, no matter what comes in this lifetime, no matter how difficult the road or how dark the night, I will hold on to you and I will literally hold you together and carry you through any and every circumstance that ever comes your way any moment on this planet. It's the promise of God. And you say, well, man, that sounds good, but how do I know that's true in my life right now, Louis? I mean, that's really what we want to know tonight. And I'll tell you how you can know tonight that God will always hold you together no matter what. It's by looking a little deeper into the human body and it's a little protein molecule called laminin. And that's about what I felt the first time I heard that. <laughs> Long story short, the tour was winding down last time around. We were in Tyler, Texas. The night was over. A guy walks up to me. I wish I could tell you the whole story. It was so of God. Introduces himself to me. He says, how are you doing? I just want to say hello. I said, it's nice to meet you. He says, you guys winding the tour down. Uh, where are you going to go from here? I said, well, I'm on my way back home to Atlanta, Georgia. He said, well, what's next for you? I said, I'm going to be preaching the next two Sundays for my pastor back in Atlanta. He said, oh, cool. What are you preaching on? I said, well, the series is on the glory of God and the human body. He said, that's really amazing. I'm a molecular biologist at the university down the road. G give me your talk. And I was like, oh, wow. I wasn't quite yet ready to unload the talk for a molecular biologist. So I kind of stumbled through what I had and he's kind of being kind and gracious and like, uh-huh, that's good. And then he says, well, what's your big left hook? You gotta have a left hook, a big finish, right? I said, I don't have a left hook yet. He said, oh, Louie, oh man, your left hook is laminin. And I'm, I'm totally blank on laminin. He goes, Louie, it's a cell adhesion molecule, protein molecule. Do you know about proteins? I'm like, no. He said, Louis, cells organize into certain molecular structures and that determines what protein there are. There are between 10 and 60,000 proteins in the human body. We don't even know how many proteins are in the human body. But one of them is a cell adhesion molecule. It's organized into this certain structure and that tells the cell what its job is in the body. And this one is a cell adhesion molecule. And I'm like, all right. He said, no, Louie, it's like the rebar of the human body. The steel they put in the concrete when they lay the foundations of things, it's that stuff. It's, it's holding your membranes together. It's the glue of the human body, Louie. It's laminin. You've got to tell them about laminin.